My name is Diane Grant, and I'll be reading an excerpt from the play What Glorious Times They Had about how the women won the vote in Manitoba in 1916, 100 years ago. The action of the play covers the time from 1912 to 1916 when the Political Equality League and the indefatigable spokeswoman for suffrage, Nellie McClung, wrote, spoke, petitioned, and held a mock parliament in an audacious move in which uh, the women held the power and a lone male delegate begged for the vote. The mock parliament was held in the prestigious Walker Theatre in Winnipeg, now named for Burton Cummings. I researched, wrote a scenario, and with members of the Red Light Theatre, wrote the play. We used music from the time, including meditation from Thais, uh, comic songs uh, from vaudeville, and uh, songs from the songbook of the Women's Christian Temperance Union. What Glorious Times was originally produced with a cast of six and a musician. We used four women and two men, but it could be a much larger group of people. The Gabriola players in BC just mounted the play with a much larger cast. The play begins with a statement from two men, the Premier of Manitoba, Sir Rodman Roblin, and his assistant, P.T. Fletcher. No woman, idiot, lunatic, or criminal shall vote. Election Act, Dominion of Canada. Then the spotlight comes up on Nellie McClung, who is speaking to an audience. People still speak of womanhood as if it were a disease. They may be somewhat prejudiced. If prejudices belong to the vegetable world, they would come under the heading of hardy perennials. Will grow in any soil, bloom without ceasing, require no cultivation, better if left alone. Take some of the prejudices regarding women that have been blown apart many, many times, and yet walk among us in the fullness of life and vigor. One of the oldest and falsest of these beliefs is that women are protected, that somehow in the battle of life they get the best of it. People talk of men's chivalry, that vague, indefinite quality that is supposed to transmute the common clay of life into gold. Chivalry is a magic word. People tell us of the good old days of chivalry, when womanhood was really respected and reverenced, when brave knight rode forth to die for his lady love. But in order to be really loved and respected, there was one hard and fast condition laid down to which all women must conform. They must be beautiful. No getting out of that. They simply had to have starry eyes and golden hair or pale white and haughty brow and a laugh like a ripple of magic. Then they were all right and armored knights would die for them quick as a wink. The homely women were all witches, dreadful witches, and they were drowned on public holidays in the mill pond. That's how it begins. By the end of the play, the women of Manitoba have the vote. Thank you.